Common Prayer of the Church of Ireland. Hello everyone. I found this little prayer book probably a year ago and haven't had or haven't taken opportunity to look through it or uh, learn much about it up to this point. And that's just a shame. So I'm going to right here on camera, let's just take a look together and uh, see how this prayer book compares to others in my enormous stack of common prayer books. This one uh, simply says common prayer. There's no, generally there's a cross motif on uh, most editions of the Book of Common Prayer. This one looks like maybe there was some personal information here that was cut out <clears throat> before donating to thrift or, or what have you. And it looks like there's evidence of a repair at some point. There's some tape maybe under this uh, paper paste down. I'm not sure if it's just a cloth over a cardboard from what I can tell. This is the Book of Common Prayer and Administration of the Sacraments, etc., etc., according to the use of the Church of Ireland. Dublin, Belfast, and Limerick Association for Promoting Christian Knowledge by authority of the General Synod of the Church of Ireland 1949 at the table of contents which I will pause there for any that want to look at that <clears throat> we have a separate preface for uh, the Irish prayer book, uh, pref uh, prefixed at the revision of 1926, prefixed at the revision of 1878. Though we were not unaware of many dangers attending on such an attempt, that revision I presume, Yet we were the more willing to make it, because we perceived to our comfort that all men on all sides professed their love and reverence for the Book of Common Prayer and its main substance and chief parts, and confessed that it contained the true doctrine of Christ, and a pure manner and order of divine service according to the Holy Scriptures and the practice of the primitive Church, and that what was sought by those who desired such a review was not any change of the whole tenor or structure of the book, but the more clear declaration of what they took to be its true meaning and the removing, removing of certain expressions here and there, which they judged open to mistake or perversions. Anything we can do to uh, avoid perversions, I'm going to give a thumbs up to. And we have the uh, familiar preface to the 1662 prayer book printed here. as well as the 1549 with the familiar calendars and lectionaries at the beginning table of lessons. I won't take a lot of time to review this, but this is the part of the Christian year that we're on as I'm recording this. Approaching Easter, we're in the latter part of Lent. And then here are the parts of the prayer book that I use most frequently, Order for Morning Prayer. So let's compare, see how this stacks up against the 1662 and what perversions they avoided uh, by moving things about. I'm going to utilize this prayer book parallels. Anglican Liturgy in America, Volume 1. So this doesn't have all the collects and such, but it does have um, daily office. 
let's go to the daily office portion of this book. That way we can just reference the services from the earlier prayer books. This is uh, laid out as a parallel, as I said. And it includes, as you can see, the 1662 and 1775 revisions of such, the 1786 proposed revision, prayer books of 1789 to 1871, the 1892 revision, these are American revisions, of course, 1928 American, the 1979 Rite 1 and 1979 Rite 2 service uh, offices. <clears throat> So, anyway, back to the main subject of what we're doing here. All right, so it starts out with uh, some of these sentences to be read. They look like the same ones from the 1662 prayer book, starting off with, When the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Those all look familiar. Dearly beloved brethren, Scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins, etc. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. The confession is familiar from the 1662 and 1928 American prayer books. It does include the miserable offenders. Thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Which is good from my point of view. You notice here, just as an aside, in this uh, parallel, so the earlier prayer books are on the left, later prayer books on the right, with 1979 taking up two columns because of two different rights. Uh, but the sentences to be read before morning prayer are few here on the left, and many and differing on the right. And not many held in common. Where there's blank space here, there's sentences or verses, same. So very little overlap between the earlier 1662 and earlier American prayer books and later revisions. Anyway, sorry, back to the uh, the main subject here. Back to Ireland. All right, so then the absolution appears to be the same. Open thee our Father, open thou our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Lord, make haste to help us, which I think is removed from, is that in the 28? I'm suddenly forgetting if that's in the 28. not in the 28. It is in the 1662 and the proposed 1786, but not later American prayer books. Okay. It's hard to see why that was found objectionable, but probably just in the interest of shortening the service. I think a lot of the changes were for that reason, although again, when you add so many choices and, and such in the later prayer book 79 um, kind of argues against that okay then we have Psalm 95 Venite and this is the complete Psalm 95 in the Irish 1949 prayer book where in American prayer books at least by 1928 they had taken out the latter part of Psalm 95 and replaced it with verses from Psalm 96 that seemed a little more pleasing and pleasant and not accusatory and penitential. Let 
Yeah, it looks like as early as 1789, the Americans had removed the last part of Psalm 95 in the Venite. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. And as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works, forty years long as I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Too much wrath for early in the morning, apparently. So beginning uh, 1789 in the American Prayer Book, they swapped out that awful section with, I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Okay. I keep getting distracted, don't I? Okay, so in the Irish book, they have the um, Easter alternative for the Venite. Printed here right after the Venite in, in morning. So one day of the, the year, you would, or I guess seven days, because it's, or eight days, Easter day and the seven days after, instead of the psalm, O come, let us sing, etc., these anthems shall be sung or said. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, not with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And it has some other from Romans, Corinthians, etc. So that is different. That there are There is a separate reading in the 1662 and 1928 prayer books, but they place that further in the book that he listed here right after the Venite in morning prayer. All right, so Psalms for the day, then the first lesson read distinctly with an audible voice. I struggle with that, as you all can uh, attest. Then the yeah, we praise thee, O God, we acknowledge you be the Lord. That is the same. The section from the, um, I guess, apocryphal sections of the, the book of Daniel, that um, Dale was kind enough, my neighbor Dale was kind enough to, to point out the origin of. I was not familiar where that had come from, but that is an option here as it is in 1662 and I believe 1928. I guess I could find out. Even up to uh, the first rite of 1979, that is an option at morning prayer. O ye heavens, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever, etc. Okay, then there's another option, a third option that is not in any of the American prayer books as far as I know. Isaiah 26, okay? We have a strong city, salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in, etc. So that's a third option. After the first lesson, okay? So second lesson, then uh, Benedictus. That appears to be the same. Or Psalm 100. I don't know if do American prayer books have Psalm 100 written out. I don't recall. Skipped right by it, I think. Song of Simeon. Yeah, I don't think. I think that's a change. The Jubilati Deo is, is printed here rather than just a rubric saying you can read that instead. Then we have the uh, Apostles' Creed. Uh, the Kyrie is here. Lord have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy upon us. Which I do not believe is in American prayer books after... After... Uh, Okay, so not in any of the American prayer books that I can see. 1662 has the Kyrie, or you cannot see that at all. But Lord have mercy upon us, but it's not in any of the American prayer books that I can find. 
Okay, this is getting exceedingly long. Um, what else? Okay, so in this we have, as one might expect, prayers for his king's majesty. The second and third collects, uh, collect for peace and collect for grace, appear to be the same as in American prayer books and as in the 1662. Uh, but uh, yeah, prayer for the king's majesty, prayer for the royal family, prayer for the chief governors in Ireland, I'm reasonably sure is not in the American prayer books, prayer for king and commonwealth, prayer for the high court of parliament and parliaments in Ireland. All right, then we're back in familiar territory. A prayer for the clergy and people. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. And that is it. I'm not going to go through evening prayer and make this even longer. But one thing I did notice, they have moved the psalms up closer to the front of the book, so it's immediately following the prayers and thanksgivings. Which I think is a is a more logical place for it, although I appreciate in my prayer books that it's moved further to the back so that I'm wearing out the front and the back of the book rather than just the fr first half of the book. As I find with the prayer book I'm using every day, it's uh, getting discolored and uh, a little bit rumpled in the beginning where I use it every day. It's certainly the same Coverdale Psalter. And then the traditional offices and ser our services here in the uh, behind that the communion immediately following, and then saints' days, and then we have the uh, collects, gospel epistles and gospels. Following that, where in uh, prayer books sixteen sixty two and uh, American prayer books the gospel the coll collects. Epistles and Gospels are uh, before the Psalter. They just have it arranged differently here. Services appear to be the same in terms of what's included, but I, I'm not going to go through the details of each service to see how they compare. Um, if I'm curious about a particular one, I'll look that up. But uh, before I get even lengthier than uh, than it already is, uh, so this is the prayer book of the book, the uh, Church of Ireland, and that deep red coloring on the edges there. Nice little book. And nice big book that is useful when you're doing comparisons. This is a type of parallel that I think actually would be useful rather than a parallel Bible because the development of the prayer book is very much an evolutionary type process where you can see the change uh, through the years when something was determined to be uh, superfluous or to be excised or when something was uh, determined to be needed and therefore inserted. So I've had this for some time too and haven't really had much opportunity to use it, let alone review it. But this may figure in future videos as well. Thanks for joining me today for this look at the Irish Book of Common Prayer and a side look at prayer book parallels, the Anglican Liturgy in America, Volume 1. I haven't found Volume 2 yet. I'm sure I can find it on eBay or some such, but I'm not willing to pay those prices at present, although it would be nice to uh, have comparisons of the collects, so maybe I'll be swayed at some point. Anyway, thanks for watching today. Um, who knows where we'll be next time. I say this all the time. But it could be something radio-related or graphite pencils or typewriters. Uh, it could be Bibles or prayer books that I happen to come across or that are just in my stack waiting for review. I appreciate you stopping by, joining in the conversation. Watch those things that you like. Like those things that you watch. And uh, hope to see you here again next time.